All right, what's up, guys? It's Tuesday. Fun show tonight. We're going to talk a little so rare. If you guys tuned into our Get Playback uh, hang last week, you saw Andy going down the rabbit hole. So we had to bring in John Boyd Beats, who's been whipping up some of the data, some of the sheets for that. We'll get a bit of a crash course in how to approach so rare. Jack will be swinging by talking about his Monday Night Football tailgate experience. And of course, we'll rip a couple of underdog drafts all here tonight on CTS. <laughs> All right, we got John Boy back in here. We got Andy still still in Connecticut, Andy. It's, it's it never ends for you, does it? Yeah, I mean, at this point I've given up on really uh anything getting better, so I just I live in Connecticut now. It's pretty cool. Uh I'm just, you know, a small town cat dad living his best life, but it's fun. <laughs> There you go. And we got uh, John Boy Beats, of course, from Momentum Labs, the guy about town. John, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Excited to talk a little so rare with you. I, I, I saw Andy was in the streets uh, a, a couple days ago and I said, uh oh, we, we might be onto something here. Yeah, you're, you're who we call in whenever we have these new things going on. We had you on last with the NFL all day, the playbook stuff. You were grinding that. Before we dive into that, is the I did just do the one today where I just blindly, I saw I could burn six moments for a premium. And I said, I don't even know if this is EV. I should ask John. And I just ripped the burn. Uh, was that the correct move by me, John? Yeah. Uh, this week's playbook was a good one, I will say. So I think okay. uh, if, you, if you if you messed around in this week's playbook, you, you probably did it for, for relatively cheap. But we'll see. And also, you know, started just burning rares over there. So gave you the option to burn rares. So I think almost like 1,400 rares got burned this week. And is that the new Dapper meta? Because Top Shot just rolled out a big burning thing as well, right? Yeah, we're just burning everything, baby. Let's see how long <laughs> we can make the users burn it until they get burnt out. Burn, baby, burn. Uh, but yeah, tonight we're going to mainly talk about So Rare. Andy was uh, getting into it last week, and it sounds like you've gone even further down the rabbit hole. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's fucked. I've been trying to figure out if it's worth it for me to multi-account So Rare. Like, I, I don't know. It's it's not good, but I know I'm having a lot of fun. It, it is it is interesting because you get 20 free cards like right away, right off the jump, and you're yeah. guaranteed like a couple good ones. Like like they do a pretty good job of like going through all the different tiers, so you get like some shitty players, some really good players. Um, but then you can't buy or sell or do anything with the common, so it's just like a tease. It's like I could keep multi counting and just like try to i don't know i try to get better prizes but you can't like do a whole lot after that so i, I don't know if it's worth it what, what, what so what i've been thinking is like i can send there's seventy thousand. i can people. send cards to someone else right i don't think you can send your commons no but i can send my other cards so basically what i've been thinking is like i i'm entering a fuck ton of the training things because i have too many cards because i'm already obsessed and what I sh what I would rather be doing is just multi accounting and sending those cards to other accounts to enter mass enter these things. So that's where I've been thinking about it. Um, yeah, but I think that's interesting. I, I, I don't know. The, I mean, this is a multi accounting aside. I think the because because we were I was trying to figure out like okay is is just big bags gonna like win this thing out right right away right if you just come in and drop a ton of cash are you gonna have like an early edge and i think because with the nba they have like the salary cap basically i feel like it kind of levels the playing field off the jump and like won't leak because in soccer and mlb i don't think there's a there's a cap and so you can just kind of load up on all the studs but I, in the nba it's it's a cap and so i think that kind of keep keeps things level and like it yeah. wouldn't really and you know wouldn't really i guess um appeal too much to multi counters because they can't just load up like all the studs so for those who are not familiar with the scoring uh it's it's similar to traditional dfs scoring but it does have some caveats um there are a few different tiers of players uh and, and those the rarity tiers, what they do is basically um, players earn XP, which gives them a just like a general point boost. So, you know, you have a 10% point boost based on a certain amount of XP. Uh, and the different rarity cards just give you a, like a jump start in that point boost, essentially. Um, 
And then with that, you every player has a cost, which is their 10-game moving average uh, fantasy score for the last 10 games. And so it's a bit unique right now because you have rookies, you have other stuff. Um, and so what I've been theorizing and thinking about is you really want to get those like boomer bus players. So the way that the scoring works is it's, uh, it's two different games a week. It's not nightly. And so if you have a player who plays, so let's say three times between um, let's Monday and Thursday, which is one of the groups of games, uh, what you really want is a player who's going to score five points twice and 50 points the third time because they're going to have the lowest possible 10-game moving average, and they're going to give you the best chance to, to win the tournament. Um, it, it's a really interesting model. I, I've been enjoying it so far. Yeah, I think I, I just pulled this up. I put this together last week or so just to kind of do like a high-level overview for people trying to get started. But um, right now they basically just have the limited, the rare, and I think they opened the super rare up today or, or for they did i've been trying to get enough players to participate for next week i feel like that's a, a good move but those auctions yeah. are intense they're competitive yeah yeah and so i think um you know the the like you talked about the different gameplay so there's the contender which is you you don't have an mvp so so there's two sides right the champion or the contender the MVP basically nukes, it doesn't count. Like the MVP doesn't count against your points cap, right? And so that's where you can play like your Giannis, your Lucas, whatever that are averaging, you know, 60. Because because you look at the points cap right here and it's 120 for champion, 110 for contender. And that's a five player roster. And so like if you're playing Luca in a contender, that's like half of your points already is going to one player. So then you're down to like, you know, getting like 12 and 15 um, average guys. And like you said, Andy, you basically have to, you're going like scars, stars and scrubs approach where you just need mm -hmm. to hit some ceilings. You're almost like, forced to. If you have any player over yeah. like 45 points, you basically have to go stars and scrubs. Yeah. Yeah. And so... But the, the really interesting part right now is the last 10 is, uh, for some players, are pretty screwed up based on, like, how either the playoffs ended last year or, like, the end of last season ended. And, like, so, like, you see, like, all these, um, like, random, like, Oklahoma City guys are up, like, super high just because they were playing only scrubs at the end of the year last year. And then, like, other guys who were injured towards the end of last year are down super low. Like John Collins is like a really good value right now. Mm -hmm. He's down really low. And, and we'll kind of get into some of that stuff uh, maybe when we pull up the sheets, but like that's kind of the interesting like battle right now is people are almost overpaying for the cheaper guys, right? Because they're the good value and, and uh, just seeing how some of that moves. Like, I, I don't know if you, I, I don't know how long ago you got into it, but like when the game's locked on Monday uh, this past week, like, the auctions and the marketplace was just a flurry, like the last like four or five hours right up to lock and things were going crazy. over what they were, what they were originally selling for. And like, I basically set my lineups and I didn't enter any training. I just like listed everything for sale and like just made some profit on those early moments. Cause I was like, I, I think I can make, you know, some money here versus like getting the extra XP boost or whatever. Yeah, that's smart. I, I, I've been going the strategy of trying to get, players who I feel good about having long-term and trying to build out like a real roster where I feel like I can compete, especially at the higher level ones. Um, and it's been, it's really challenging when you get past the limited. I mean, yeah. these auctions are really, really competitive to get the good players. Team. Yeah. But like, you know, there's, there's, there's some guys and, and I just, I thought, I'd, I thought there'd be more edge than there is, but like, you know, some of these younger guys who are maybe second round picks and their second year in the league who are like, they're, they're going to put up numbers at some point. You're like, yeah, let me start accumulating some XP. Let me get them going. It's intense auctions to get them. Although I did, I did just get a uh, IO Dasunmu today for like super cheap. All things, I got him for like 40 bucks. I felt really good about that. Um, got a Desmond so Bain for 50. Not to walk his back too much here, but you gotta you gotta bring me along slowly. I did just claim my twenty free cards here. So oh, now let's go. I, now I enter a tournament. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it looks like it can only enter common champion, and anyone who has an account can get twenty free cards. Is that correct? 
Yeah, I think that's yeah, one of the really yeah. interesting things is it's all it's theoretically free to play. You, you could, if you were really, really good, really lucky, get to the highest level of competition only ever doing it free to play. Mm. So now what does this mean when it says add player? Does this mean in my 20 free cards I don't have enough eligible players to field a team? I think this is uh, still like a tutorial kind of thing. So I think oh, okay. Yeah, so if you press compose team down there, it'll bring you to the – oh. Uh, well, you're not, not that super one. Rare yet, dude. You got a lot. Go to, <laughs> so, yeah, click on common contender. Okay. Here you go. Do so champion. now you can set do your champion team. first. Do the champion one because then you can play the studs. So the difference between champion as contender is you play an MVP and the champion, and it doesn't count against your cap. So like you can throw in Tatum, and those forty-eight points don't count. Okay. So yeah. So tell me what I what I do now. It's. So you're setting up a lineup for game week three right now, which is – so the game weeks are Monday through Thursday, which is what's going on right now, and then Friday through Sunday. So, like, the game starting on Friday is what you're going for now. And so, I mean, I would just start, like, building this lineup. I would throw Tatum in there just to start, and then I would see, like, who you have at the bottom of your pool. Like, who – do you have any good values down there? Um, and, like, Shamit is actually a decent value at 10. Um Dean Wade is kind of decent because he's like projected for like 68 or something. Uh, let's see if you got anybody in like the what 20 is, range. What does so, the plus like 5% the sweet mean? So the plus 5%, remember I mentioned that we mentioned XP? Yeah. So the so the more you play someone, they gain XP. Uh, everyone, if, if their card is from current year, they get a default 5% XP or 5% point bonus. So next it's not as valuable this year because everyone has it next year let's say you have a luca card that you got last year um that will no longer have that default five percent bonus so okay. that's how they kind of make the the new seasons cards more valuable so is this like you old can't school? counteract that by building it so like whatever the points you score this week with whatever this lineup is it adds xp to your cards and so like each time you play your cards you're gaining xp and so theoretically like i don't know in a couple of weeks you could have a 10 percent boost on some of these moments or something gotcha and so that is rewarding basically this a pyramid scheme the people who get in earliest yeah, yeah. are okay oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah as all, as that's why i'm so excited about it, that's why i'm so excited about it um but so what's interesting about it is the way that they actually are able to do this like free to play model is the so like this contest rewards the limited cards to the top x percent of players and those cards you can only buy on the secondary market or from more advanced contests and so like those cards you can trade and they're worth money and so you can like slowly build up and earn rarer and rarer cards until you can eventually get to the point where you're playing in cash games mm. and so those like if you go and look at like the soccer upcoming games, you can see they have at the rarer levels actual cash prizes, but it's still all free to play because it's all funded by the secondary market and initial sales of the cheaper games. And so it's kind of this idea of wanting to build up to eventually be able to play in the cash games. So is this like old school rotisserie fantasy basketball that I played where it's like I'd always want to choose the guy with two games and never play the guy with one game or no? Uh, it depends. Like, it just depends because it's best ball, right? So, and I know that's a trigger word, VP, but, um, but basically it's the, the best score from the week is what holds. So it, you know, technically like you wouldn't oh, want so to it's play. Just, it's just yeah. one game. It's so nothing with cumulative points matters. You just are trying to get their so best So you want game. really high volatility guys. Ah, you want the guys who are, high and so when you have their cost is the average of the last 10 games. So you want the guy who scores, like I was saying, five and fifty, not the guy who scores twenty-five every night. Okay, that makes sense. So, like, so based on your rundown right here, I would say, like, um, I would say you probably who you you had somebody at like twenty-eight there. Do you, I think, who I thought was do you know if there. um Mark Cuban's gonna pump Maxi Kleber on so rare in an article <laughs> because that might impact my decision. Yeah. That could, that could. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna want to list him for sale, but make sure you do it before the Titan uh, stablecoin blow up, because then he's gonna be out on all of it for a while. So Titan V2 pretty soon. Whenever that comes out and Cubans into it, you gotta get out, sell that maxi cleaver. I know just enough to get that reference, but not enough to fully get it. Um, 
All right, John, who am I picking here? So scroll up. You had somebody at like 28. Oh, you had Trey Mann in there, who's uh, I think yeah. a good play. He's going because, off tonight. Yeah, he's, he's doing really well tonight. tonight. And no Giddy. And I mean, it's just tank tank season there. So that could be good. Jaden McDaniels is a pretty good value, I think, at 22. He's kind of been in the same yeah. spot on my spreadsheets. So now you got 35 per position. So, I mean, with the with the champion here, you can kind of pay up a little bit. So you could throw in like your can you, you, Dame, I think. You can probably fit in Wood and Dame. No, no, you can't. You could do Wood and... I think Wood and Dort is probably, or, or Wood and Barrett is probably better than Dame and, and yeah, you Taylor can do Horton wood Tucker. And, uh, wood and Barrett, yeah. There you go. That's solid. Okay. And then, what, sorry, refresh my memory on the, this is their, their average score over. And so then that is actually serving as almost the salary cap for what you can yeah. put in this lineup. Yeah. Okay. And so basically, for those that are following the, the salary cap locks like twice a week. So right when the Monday games start, like all the players' salary cap changes again, and then it stays the same, right? So like between now and Friday, these numbers won't change, even though Friday is when it starts. Um, but then as soon as the Friday contest starts, then they'll all like update, you know, take in the last couple games. And then it'll, so it's not like a fluid salary cap for each contest, right? That would be kind of screwy. It'd be like DraftKings changing the salaries throughout the week. Um, so they they lock twice a week, basically, but it always pulls in their most recent games. Um, and so, yeah, so you pulled up the sheet here um, that I put together. So, of course, trying to trying to like get a handle on all this stuff. Right. And so I, I we've been pulling in some data. We've gotten into the the Serval Rare data API a little bit here, and we're trying to just get a feel for like, where's the best value with all this stuff, right? So we've got the points cap in here, um, you know, which is, uh, it's actually not perfect on the website. We're still working through some kinks and maybe off a little bit here or there. Um, <clears throat> but then, and then I have a projection. Is the, the points way. cap their cost? Yeah, that's their cost. Yep. Okay. So then, and then what I did is I, I put together a projection for, the, that player's week, um, basically game week. And then it spits out like a value. Um, and so we could see like, let's see if this will work. Some of the better values. Yeah. There's some weird zeros in here, but like you can see a guy like Josh green, Jordan, Nora, JTA, like some of these players who are like really low points caps, like in the single digit points caps, but are kind of fringe bench players and stuff like that. Um, they're projecting as the best values. Um, but you know, it's not just purely value that we care about. You also want to look at ceiling. And so what I pulled in also, and I've just started this for the 2022 season only, but started pulling in ceiling values for what these players so rare scores have been throughout, throughout, you know, the season. Um, and so what, what you, we can kind of like scroll down into like some of these like mid 20 range players, and you'll start to see like a pretty big, uh, delta here because like if we go to like the bam level right the this is like you know a, a pretty mid-tier level here bam scotty d'angelo russell og ananobi like it's like you know solid nba players but then you can kind of see the swings of the ceilings here um where you know it's 48 is what d'angelo russell has done this year and scotty you know has been hurt a little bit but his ceiling's only been 34 um evan mobley's only had a ceiling of 26 um, and so it's not like perfect in the sense of, um, you know, like a true, I'm going to lock this guy in the true, like, you know, ceiling projection, like maybe people are used to in like DFS, but I'm just trying to get a feel for like, what have they actually scored this year versus like, what are they projecting, uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is really interesting. I, I think trying to figure out, especially with this multi-game format where, you really, really want the guy who's the high variance play figuring out that like Delta from their average is yeah. going to be super valuable. Like I almost just feel like sure in, in the right lineup construction, you want Giannis who's going to cost you 60, but he's going to also score you 65 probably. Uh, but for the most part, you want the guy like the like Clay Thompson-y kind of guy or someone like that who's going to 
go off one night and drop hit 10 threes and have a crazy game. So you have something the other thing I pulled in here. Sorry, Pete, but no, this good. is so I started tracking just like this season's uh average. And so and what that is compared to their current score. So the delta is basically what they've been averaging this year versus what their market cap or mm. points cap is right now. And so you can see a guy like Brooke Lopez, his average has been 37, right? So over the next, you know, probably two weeks, he's probably going to trend closer to 37. And so maybe that's a good value buy, at least for a couple weeks. You know, not a lot of people are maybe targeting Brooke Lopez, but as his, you know, his cap goes up, you know, maybe you get a couple weeks of good value there. Um, and then you see like these guys, like uh, this was an example of a OKC guy last year who has a cap of 26. Theo Maladon, now he's on the Hornets and he's only been averaging eight. And so that guy's going to start tanking in value uh, or in cap as the season goes on. Uh, I was curious with your projection for ceiling. Do you have a boost in there? Like uh, I'm sure there's a, a math equation for it of if you have two cracks at it versus one crack versus just saying, hey, they're ceiling Giannis is 57 in any game. Do you have an added premium if they're getting two cracks at it? <clears throat> Not yet. So I and and truly the ceiling isn't even a projection right now. Mm. Um, it because it's it's purely just taking like what they've done this year so far. Um, and so once we get like a, a couple more weeks under, because I I mean honestly like the way I start building a lot of these tools is like okay if I want to buy something on the market like how am I like assessing this right? And so it's like okay I want to look for a guy who's like low low points but has scored well this year right? And so that's like immediately what I went to for ceiling. But as we get kind of uh, a couple more data points under our belt and a couple more weeks in the NBA season, then I am going to start uh, uh, changing that tool around a little bit and that projection a little bit more. And I think, yeah, I mean, I, I'll definitely have to figure out a way to account for like the players who have three, like on the Monday through Thursday games, players will have three games and then some will have one. And so that's where I think it's going to be the decision points on like, yeah, you want three cracks at it, right? Especially if it's a, you know, I'm like the way like the NBA is going this year with everybody resting and stuff like that. Like if you play a low, low points guy and he's got three games in a week, like there's probably a decent chance he's like randomly starting one of these games, right? And like can, can, yeah. can blow past his like 10 point average or whatever. Yeah, well, I've been like, slamming bowl bowl in every lineup I can get. Cause it's like, yeah, one of these games is going to go crazy. And this week he got like last night, he got five blocks. <laughs> it's just like one day he's going to have a lot of blocks and it'll work out for me. And so he dropped like 36 for my lineup. Yeah. Well, and I've been picking up like Ty Ty Washington, who's worth a zero right now. He's a rookie. He hasn't played a game yet, but I think when he gets healthy, he's going to play for the Rockets. So like those first two weeks, he's going to be, or the first like week or whatever, he's going to legit be a zero and he's going to be scoring points. And like, all the rookies last week who were zeros were going for like huge premiums in the market right before the lock, just because it's such a cheat code. And um, so like getting on some of those players now, like Jalen Williams on the thunder uh, is, you know, what had a great preseason was, you know, averaging a double double in preseason. Then he got hurt. And so he's at like a four right now. And like, as soon as he comes back, I mean, the thunder suck, he's going to be playing a lot. So he's going to outscore the four. And so it's like this weird balance of like trying to plan for the future but then, like, as soon as the bets you make on the players start hitting, then all of a sudden it, like, hurts your lineups because now you have to, like, you start go selling. find the new guy that's going to be a value. It's it's a really interesting dynamic. How, how efficient is it? Like, if I assume if you do, when you get really good projections, you could calculate an optimal, like, would ownership projections track toward that optimal, or is it just the Wild West right now? I think it's still a wild bus right now. So I don't think people have enough players yet right. to be really making optimal lineups. Like I've I've put a decent amount of money into <laughs> so rare. And like I can only craft so many lineups that don't like total shit. And so I think that still people are pretty early on as far as what they can actually build. Yeah, it's it's totally capped on like it, it's capped on your bankroll right now. I would say versus like actually playing the right plays or like playing the best players or whatever. Because you know, like the 
the uh, rare contest open and you need three rares and two limiteds. And like, just for, you know, for um, context, the rares, like a decent rare is probably going for like over a hundred bucks, maybe in the $200 range for like anybody who's not like a complete scrub. Um, and so like, you gotta, you know, you be willing to put some money in to get, to get a decent rare. And so like everybody was basically going for the super cheap rares, like the, the, you know, the 10 point rares and just spending like 50 bucks on a guy who like maybe could play. And then they were trying to get a lot of points in the limited um, to, to like fill up their lineup with the two limited cards. And, uh, you know, I think it was as simple as like, oh, maybe play like one slightly better rare this week. <laughs> and and then you get the 15% boost instead of the 5% boost. And like, maybe that's enough to like completely lap the field on on like everybody else who's just jamming in the cheap guys so i think it's like super early on like anything like for like game theory optimal type stuff for like playing the right players and it's like it's all just kind of like understanding what the trends are and like where the market's going and so is it are we still too early right now are there like opportunities to flip specific players that you're buying low on and then they have a good schedule coming up are there are there bottlenecks too for for certain players that people want that they can't get access to what are those dynamics like well so i actually wanted to talk through that with you andy because have you have you kind of um figured out i guess the how it works for supply right because it seems like the auctions are I can't really tell how the auctions work, like how they decide. I can't either. <laughs> it seems so like, crazy. I know. So like they have some super complex algorithm, obviously, that like figure like tracks all this stuff. And, you know, I've had meetings with the so rare guys and they're all like these like French dudes that are super sharp. But but basically they they have a way of like controlling uh, supply based on the demand. And so like. I mean, that's maybe something that's worth bringing up. Like, this isn't like Top Shot where you can just go buy packs. The only way you can get moments is winning them in a in a contest or, or cards or whatever, is winning them in a contest or buying them uh, from an auction. Or, or then there's the secondary sales from managers who buy it from an auction and then sell it. Um, but yeah, there's no... After you get those first 20 free cards, like, that's it. There's no more, you know, like, plus EV packs and, like, you know, home run moonshots and stuff like that. And so basically what they do is they just start at like a cadence for these auctions, right? And so like there'll be, you know, 10 Lori Markinens for sale over the next like 10 hours. And then like some days there's maybe only like five of them. And then some days there's like eight of them lined up. And then some days there's 20 or whatever. And I think it's, and so like all the players have like different, uh, like different uh, supply out right now, which is kind of interesting um, because I feel like as soon as like, you know, one player is wanted more than the other and like he only has like 60 cards out there and he's like the screaming value of the week. Like you think like he would probably shoot up pretty big, but like, I don't know. It's going to be pretty interesting. I've noticed that a little bit. Them. Like uh, who was it? Uh, Nick Richards is someone who was yeah. – uh, his he was getting a serious bid this week as I was I was trying to get some of him for some lineups because he's at like a ten point per game basis and yeah, he just dropped forty two and like he was one who I noticed um, there have been a couple others like that yeah, where it's like okay yeah people are um, onto this yeah totally I think people are figuring out like Tyrese Halliburton is a good example so I bought a Halliburton yeah. for I think like. I think like 50 bucks and I sold them for like 75 bucks right before the contest locked. And that was interesting because I had every intention of playing Halliburton. And then like, I couldn't get enough because he was like a 40. And so Mm -hmm. I just couldn't get enough like things to work around the 40 for it to be like a viable lineup. So then I like had to play, you know, less moments. And then I just sold the Halliburton for some profit after he had a pretty good start. Um, But yeah, I mean, like, I I don't know. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch like as soon as a so like a uh, Dyson Daniels is going off tonight and he's a rookie uh for the Pelicans and like you know who knows I, I don't know if the Pel- if he's going to always get a lot of playing time but I went and just grabbed like the two cheapest Dyson Daniels off of the manager sales I didn't even wait for the auctions cuz I looked at the auctions I was like oh it's already getting close to what the low ask is like I'm sure tomorrow people are going to be buying up Dyson Daniels so I just went and grabbed two of them and like, I don't know, maybe you'll be able to flip it. Maybe you just hold them or play them or whatever. And like those kind of like in-game things is 
what I what I thought I was getting into when I like got onto Top Shot, right? I was trying to keep my like NBA DFS, like roll that into like kind of gaming the uh, system here with the NFT stuff or kind of like bringing some of that knowledge over. And like, this is just fully scratching the itch, I think. <laughs> and so now I entered that one contest. And so then with my remaining cards, I'm able to enter other contests basically. So for a given week, only one card can be in a, a single contest. Yes. Yeah. And so is it theoretically like you could build based on your personal cards, you could build kind of optimal lineups based off of those. Like you could have an optimizer or how do I get the most points into my, my starting five? Well, Pete, if you, if you head over to that window, I was sharing earlier, oh. I got a, I got a lineup builder in there, baby. In Oh, the spreadsheet in the spreadsheet. Yeah. So okay, I'll perfect. scroll over to it. So uh, and let I people added, know, let people know where they can find this. Cause people I'm sure are wondering they need, they need the goods. Let people know. Yeah. So right now it's, um, it's just through momentum labs. There's a, we have a button on the momentum labs, uh, website that takes you to the so rare sheets. Um, it's, it's in the discord. It's on my Twitter, all that stuff. It's free for, uh, it's free for this, uh, week, uh, also. And then we're going to go, uh, for premium subscribers only. But um, is it working? Is it scrolling? Can I post it? Can I post the sheet in the chat? You yeah, said yeah, free post for it. post it. It's okay. free. They can right. they can hit it up. Um, are you sharing or am I sharing right now? Oh, I think I'm sharing. sharing. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to switch? You want to share? Yeah. So yeah. You can go I'll through. share yeah. and then I'll um, I'll scroll over. All right. Here you go. So yeah, basically what I did, and you know, this is just kind of like trying to quickly get it together, but I you can put in like your players here and then it'll pull in like, so you'd have to save a copy of the sheet and all that stuff, but you can pull in like, it pulls in like a, uh, you know, what are their projections and everything. And so this is my like lineup of uh, common cards right now. I I play super well in the, in the champion contest last week and I, and I got a Giannis, um, which was a, a sweet pull, but basically nice. you can kind of try to like build it out right now. So I'll try to like build a Giannis lineup um with my uh and, and it shows like you, you know it's a little bit of manual entry but i mean you know that was hand built on us hand builders here pete we, we Wait, really you gotta learn how to spell every... Giannis's last name I and know, that's I'm, tough I'm losing it Jeez. this is a spelling um, bee exercise is what yeah. it is yeah so we got the Giannis, and like this will tell you your remaining salary cap and then this will tell you like your projection and your ceiling and stuff like that and so nice um so now i'm at like you know 30 per player left right so i could throw in you know Nick Claxton, uh, who's been who's been a pretty good value. Um, yeah. At twenty seven, he's been playing well. I can go down here. Like Stephen Adams has been playing well also. Um, so put him in there, and now I'm now I'm up to thirty eight left, right? So I can start going uh, a little bit higher here. Um, Shingun has been playing all right. So let's see what if he gives me an option to get up to like uh 47 yeah so i can get up to halliburton here. oh there you go um so like that's that's a decent lineup there so that's like 180 248 and then i can go here and i can do like a similar thing with Giannis, um and then try to do like a more balanced build maybe so i do like a dame um do like sabonis so I'm not going like super high and then like or or i guess this would be more scrubs um but maybe I throw in like uh, JaVale McGee at 12, see what that leaves me, um, 26, so whatever, Mike Conley. So, oh, there you like, go. That's not bad. Yeah, not a bad lineup. And and you can kind of see here like uh -huh. the, uh, the projection, I'm getting more projection here, but in this lineup I have a little bit more ceiling. Um, and again, the ceiling is like kind of weird. Let's see what's thrown off the ceiling here. Uh yeah, I, I guess I don't know why. This I think it's JaVale. Sh it's, your oh, your, oh, JaVale, your yeah. cheaper guys have much higher ceilings on the the first lineup. Yeah, yep. Yeah, Shingun already has a forty five outing, and and Claxton has a huge one. So, so like th those are the important things to think through. Like even though this is given up, you know, eleven points of projection, I'm gonna play this lineup for sure because I have a two hundred fifty point outcome versus you know two twenty. And I assume, like, the are the structures pretty top-heavy anyways, like, just sealing over everything? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, so in the – well, in the champion one well, – I, I don't know. I, we've only seen, like, one or two contests. But in the champion, it was pretty top-heavy. But then in the contender, 
which is the one where you can't really play the studs. Uh, you have to do a little bit more balance build. The top 15%, I think, all got a tier two reward. It was like by 15s. So it was like tier two, tier three, tier four. So you only had to be in the top 15% um, to get the best reward in that one. So maybe I can, maybe I could pull, I'll pull that up real quick. Um, and is this, I mean, through. because, because this is the debut of this product, like there's no, there's no even way to run like historical data on how this would go because you wouldn't have the XP and the exact stuff to do it correctly. Right. So there's yeah. just like, there's no data on if studs and duds is better than a balance build, et cetera. Yeah. Not that I'm aware yeah. of it. It's like total wild, wild west. I feel like. So, so this is the, um, this is the contender contest right now. So this is the one where you don't have an MVP. So you you have 110 points and you got five players. So you're in kind of that 20 point range uh, of, a, of, you know, an average, but you can see top 15% get a tier one reward and then, you know, 30, 30% tier two. Um, they haven't, I don't think they've really shared a list of what the tiers are yet. I think they do that in the other sports. So maybe they're getting there, but like, I think I won a tier two last week and it was Halliburton. And then I won a tier one and it was Giannis. And so like, that's kind of, that's kind of what you're working with when you, open I can your first give a little more 20. insight there. I think oh, yeah, there you go. from mine, let's see what, what did I get? I got a, I finished, I think I got a tier one. I got a Devin Booker. Okay. Yeah. So that gives a little, I think that, yeah. So. And then you can see here in the champion, the, the bigger pool, uh, or I guess the bigger prize, you can win. This is where it's a little bit more top heavy. So top three, you know, win a tier one limited. And then, you know, the top 100 win a tier two, top 1,000 win a limited. And then everybody after that wins commons. And so that's what Andy was talking about earlier, where you could, you really grind and level your way up for free on like, you know, win a bunch or win a bunch of limited ends the common then you get into a limited contest then you start winning some rares um and stuff like that and like so the biggest thing that i think is maybe worth talking about with you guys that i'd be interested to hear your opinion is like okay if all you can do is win cards like what is is this just like a circular ponzi that <laughs> is gonna gonna run out of steam or do you think it has like some staying potential? Well, I think it I think it really goes back to having cash prizes at the top. Um, so like if you go and look at if you go look at the soccer one, football, football yeah. if you go look at that, they have actual cash prizes for all of like they have way more games and a lot of cash prizes. And so yes. So, yeah, what that knows. does as soon as you get to the is limits. then winning the cards is way more valuable because that gives you the chance to win cash prizes. And so I think with that, like, at the end of the day, who the fuck knows? But yeah. this has been running for a bit, and it, like, hasn't totally collapsed. If anything, I think it's, like, doing pretty well. And I think a big yeah. part of that is having these, you know, if you hit a tournament just right, you do get a cash prize. And I, I from what I can tell... I've been ta asking around. Um, I think some of these bigger players are like making a lot of money doing it. And so I, I do think that there's like some real incentive to want to have the best cards and be able to construct the best lineups. And is that, is that basically the elegance of the game design in that the future reward potential of getting winning a, an elite card could potentially outweigh just cashing out for that card on the market is that is that where it comes into play i think so and so for some people you maybe you just want to cash out that card and take the cash but for others you want to try to I mean, uh, like you can <clears throat> like there's up. two schools of thought i think and like right now i think i would i would say like I think it's a little bit too early to just like start locking into like, you know, boosting the XP of your players. Cause, oh, I'll show, um, I'll click out of this and I'll talk about training because so basically you put in all your cards. Uh, here, I'll go back to the NBA. Uh, you put in all your cards that you can make for lineups and then the rest of them just go in training. And so you can build however many you can, you can max that out. And then they just get like an XP boost that week. 
um, just for being in training. So you don't have any chance at prizes, but they at least get an XP boost. Um, so I would say it's probably still, personally, I think it's still too early to like really start honing in on like who's your squad, who you're going to hold for the long term, stuff like that. Like, I think there's, there's plenty of kind of decision making and money to be made in these like week or two flips on like just trying to be ahead of the market on where things are trending for the last 10 averages. But once we get like closer to like the middle of the season and, you know, there's not like as much volatility on the averages, then I think, and, and maybe by then they'll have more contest token and stuff like that. Then I think you really want to start, you know, thinking about your full roster and stuff like that. And like, you know, if, if you can get a, if that can be your differentiator, right? It's be, it'd be like playing, you know, Josh Jacobs and DraftKings, but instead of scoring 39.5 points this week, you get an extra 15% boost and he scores 54 or whatever. I know that oh, hurts, Pete. I know God, that hurts. I know what that a hurts. disgusting analogy for me, John. But like that can differentiate. Like you could still play a good player if you've got a really good boost on him because you've owned him for a while or whatever. And uh, so like those little nuances, I think can really start setting you apart. But like, I don't know. It's it's hard because you can't like I don't think you can really tell or you can't get like a CSV download of like who everybody played and stuff like that. And so like I'll be interested to see like who wins the rare contest and like click through this week and see like what the good lineups were. And if it was like just guys who got lucky or if it's like some sharps in there that are like really playing the best, you know, like value plays and all that stuff, it, it'll be fun to figure out. Well, and that has to be super hard from like if you ever did do an ownership projection standpoint because that XP boost for individual cards, like it, it, that would be such a moving target. Yeah, yeah, totally. And and that's like why we're, we're going to try to probably, I don't, I don't know, I'm not going to commit to that because it's probably a lot of work and there's there's some DFS sites that probably will figure it out quicker than us if this thing turns hot. But I mean, being able to customize this like you know optimizer kind of thing towards just the cards that you have i think would be pretty valuable yeah. um and so like it, and yeah taking it like I, I we've built it to where you can put in the boost manually and stuff like that but it's still it's still a decent amount of manual entry and so um but like e even just like simply like taking your 20 cards this week that you get for free and just messing around with our lineup builder tool for you know 20 minutes and just being like oh i could do this combo which is this, or I could do this, which is like way better. And just like landing on the way better one. I think that's going to like pay dividends, you know, over time. And I mean, that's like the difference between getting like a booker, like Andy was saying, or getting like, I don't know, this random bench player who's like never going to play. Right. So Andy, are, are you, um, you know, like with top, with your early top shot strategy, I mean, you were stacking, you know, undervalued moments, the way this game works you'd probably be opening yourself up to far too much risk, right? Like injury or, or bus level risks because the main utility of the card is, you know, actually scoring fantasy points. Yeah. I think there's like, well, I mean, I think you probably had that risk in top shot as well. Uh, yeah. Like being realistic, but yeah, I, I think like it definitely is significantly more, actual points score driven than top shot was right yeah because like if you have say you stacked 100 steph curry's like you know the longevity of his legacy and stuff is going to hold up but if you stack that in so rare and then you're not able to use him in any contest for an entire season because he tears his acl like that that stings way more than it did on top shot i imagine yeah for sure John, how, think, what would you say? I think it's oh, going to be interesting. Sorry. Is like how these auctions go and like how the supply goes for these players, because like the limiteds are capped to like 5,000 and you know, the rares are capped to like, uh, you know, a thousand and it goes down from there. But like, if you look at even like the MLB players right now for, they did, I, I don't remember if they did a full season of MLB or if they got in halfway through or whatever, but the MLB players are only minted to like 500 right now. They've only, they've only like auctioned off, you know, between three to 500 of the players. And so they're not getting to that full, like 5,000 cap. And, and that's where they, they theoretically have a better finger on the pulse than top shot does on supply is they're just like, you know, however their algorithm works for these auctions, they're minting to demand. And so like 
Like, I have no idea where all these random soccer leagues are at with their season and stuff like that. But, like, I yeah. just clicked on the soccer auctions and, like, all, some of these guys that are just now getting auctioned off are only in the, like, 100 out of 1,000, right? And so, like, they're not just, like, fully getting the supply out there. And you can see that on, like, a daily basis with the auctions that are available um, on the on the marketplace. Like, it'll fluctuate between there being a lot available versus there not being that much. And so, like, I don't think it's crazy to think, like, oh, there's only going to be, you know, like, maybe 20% of the supp stated supply of a player. And so when you get to the point where it's like, yeah, it's, you know, Steph Curry is looking like a great value this week or whatever. And, you know, it's not, even a hundred people are shooting for 500 cards or something like, I don't know, that seems like it has some potential to see some pop versus like, you know, <laughs> top shot flash challenges right now where every player has 200,000 moments and it goes from $2 to $3 or something. I had this question too. David says, um, once you submit your lineup, can you edit it before lock? Yeah. Yes. Uh, if you sell it, if you sell it, it'll automatically like boot it out. If you sell a, a moment or a card in it, it'll automatically mm. boot it out. But yeah, you can move it around up until lock. There's no like late swap or anything like that. So once the, once the week starts, it's locked. And after the week starts, you can also sell um, right away. And so I know, there's a couple of people in my discord who had some of the like good cards, like the good value cards. And as soon as the lineups locked, they accepted an offer <laughs> right away from somebody. And it was like, uh, that was kind of a, kind of a cheat, I guess. So uh, you almost get sure. to have your cake and eat it to get the points for that week, but then sell high on the buzz or whatever. Yeah. And I will say like, they've, they've already have the offer system in play, which is pretty sweet. And like, when I, when I had set my, so basically what I did is I, earlier in the week, I bought like, you know, a handful of limiteds, like, I don't know, maybe 20 of them or something, just kind of spraying and praying and seeing what I could come up with. And then I went around and made my lineups and I was like, okay, well, like most of these cards have gone up since I bought them. So I'm going to just sell the rest of them. And so I started listing them. Um, and then like immediately I got a couple offers and it's like, okay, well, this is like close enough. I'll just accept this offer rather than waiting on it or whatever. And like, I don't know, their marketplace just seems really seamless and it's like really quick. Um, and I thought that's like a pretty big uh, advantage, um, you know, or, or a pretty big like user onboarding thing. Like it's rather intuitive of like how to like buy and sell and like move off of things. So on a scale of uh, me spending three minutes a week setting my Rumble lineup to, you know, building a plus EV DraftKings tournament lineup, where where do you think this falls on like the time commitment? Is this one of those things where you just have to get addicted and go down the rabbit hole to be good at it? I mean, I think it, it could definitely be on the opposite like it could be more than building a draft geeks life like you oh, could God. definitely like <laughs> it, it can get like i'm spending more time on this than i have on draft geeks right now just because i'm trying to figure it all out and i'm trying to like build this tool and like be able to kind of give analysis and stuff um i i will be coming out with like a strategy blog in the next couple days um to try to like summarize some of the stuff that i've been digging into so keep an eye on my twitter for that but um there, there's that aspect of it where you could get like crazy like me or i think if you have like like if you're playing nba dfs right now i think you would be pretty you would do pretty well at this because you know like the value players you know like some of the injury stuff like you kind of know like some of those sweet spots of like oh Kawhi was ruled out so let me play you know norm powell and nick batum or whatever and and kind of some of those things and so i think if you just have like a general knowledge of you know, like the NBA rosters and like some of those value guys, I think, I think you could do it with, you know, a pretty, pretty low amount of time. And especially, you know, if you use our sheets, you could just uh, whip through it there. And I, I do think that's the thing too. And I've, I've listened to some people I saw, I've seen some screenshots from like NBA DFS cash games right now. And it's just everyone running out the same lineup and, you know, the things I keep hearing over and over your, your time would be better spent doing underdog props. Your time would be better spent um, doing things like so rare, uh, you know, and using that same knowledge, but in far less efficient markets. So it does seem like that's where things are trending. Um, yeah. well, I would say, John, so we got, uh, 
Uh, obviously, people follow you on Twitter. I got your link in the show notes. I'll also link to that Google Sheet in Momentum Labs if people are wanting to go down the rabbit hole is the best place. Uh, do you got the Momentum Labs Discord? Is it just getting signed up? What's what's the best way to go down the rabbit hole? Yeah, I'll give the Momentum Labs elevator pitch here. So basically, we're re- we're actually running a um, sale for the rest of this month here, the next week, where sign up for Momentum Labs, you get a year for 99 bucks. Um, and basically, we've got Top Shot tools, we've got NFL All Day tools, um, and then we've got really whatever comes up that I decide to build a spreadsheet <laughs> for. So we've got like Moment Ranks Play, we've got So Rare, we've got Super Draft, which is just starting up um and doing some top shot related prizes on super draft so um really just trying to bring all that stuff together once toc gets rolling again we'll have toc we have rumble projections like all this stuff um you know either 10 bucks a month or 100 bucks for the year and um yeah you get access to the discord like i'm posting a lot of stuff in there i'm just kind of doing analysis and stuff on all this all these different things you can get us you know we've got a dk rainmakers channel in there that there's like seven dudes who are just fully grinded it and you know we've got a place for everybody here at momentum lap so uh that that's the elevator pitch we are going to be coming out with an nfl flash challenge tool um nfl all day uh this week so that should be hopefully live by the thursday night football game um so that'll be kind of fun an easier way to track some of those things but but yeah that's what we're rolling with Awesome, dude. Well, uh, first of all, I don't, you're more than welcome to hang. I was going to ask Andy a little bit about Reddit NFTs and hop in an underdog draft, but if you uh, got to get going, uh, we appreciate you swinging by. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I think I'm uh, I think I'm going to bail, but I uh, appreciate uh, hanging out with you guys. For sure. And check this out that fun. spreadsheet while it's free. Hit up John Boy. Check out the Discord Momentum Labs for all of your so rare and other sports slash NFT content. Thank you, John, for swinging by. All right. See you guys. Peace. Um, yeah. So what what's the deal with these these Reddit NFTs? I I started reading a little bit about it. It apparently this is V two of these. There was an initial V one version of these, Andy. I don't fucking know. They they were like they were auctioned off. I saw it. I didn't buy any. I don't feel good about it. I don't know. <laughs> um, but they. So let me see if I can pull up the Dune Analytics board for it. Okay. They've done very well. So I think they have yeah. like seasons. So like season two is what's happening right now. Um, and what they have just no one gave a shit almost, about. Yeah, they have almost uh, three million holders. One. Well, so, like, I I had heard for a bit that the Series 1 ones were doing well, and I just kind of ignored it because I'm not very good at all of this. Um, Yeah. But, yeah, they've done... So, it's interesting because they haven't done that much in volume. So, like, their cumulative sales volume over the last... over Like, in their entire existence is, like, $7 million dollars. Which, you know, it's a lot, but in NFT terms, it's like an NFT mint. That's not that much. Um, and but, it seems like this is why people are excited. 2.8 new million new wallets of Reddit users. And I assume there's also like the idea of look at what Reddit was able to do with GameStop, uh, GameStop and traditional stocks. What if they brought this level of energy and memification to NFTs? Is that the thesis? I think so. Um I mean, I think like very bullish in general for crypto that a bunch of people on Reddit are all getting into NFTs and are kind of being tricked into thinking that maybe our bags are good. We like that. Um, Right. I think like at the same time, people are probably slightly overreacting as to how good this is for like their general <laughs> NFT collections. Yeah. Um, but uh, six, it's definitely uh, six, interesting. Apparently I, I saw, I think it was the guys at NGMI. I saw some links in there that all the NFT influencers were flocking to Reddit to try to like <laughs> claim their, yeah. their clout stake uh, over there as well. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. I and mean, it's funny because like the Reddit people are like, oh yeah, I don't really like Farouk. I don't like this guy. <laughs> it's funny to see like this different group of people all pop up on Reddit. It's so wild. Like I, uh, I'm not a big. Uh reddit guy occasionally i'll see links or people will share stuff of like fantasy football stuff on reddit and you're like holy shit this is an entirely different world <laughs> like it just it's an entirely different ecosystem you sometimes couldn't believe it i assume the same thing with nft like oh, yeah. nft reddit versus like nft twitter or nft discord has to be i mean uh, for the most part fun. reddit hated nfts <laughs> up until up until these but and so it's been funny reading all of the like posts on the subreddit where that are like i think nfts are stupid but here's why the reddit nfts might be different and the general <laughs> argument is like the exact same argument you've seen everyone post on twitter for the last year and a half about nfts <laughs> which has been funny um but I, I think there's like something actually valuable there of like how did they trick everyone into thinking that nfts were good now like what did they do differently what right. did they do right and you know, there's like, oh, people that are calling it digital collectibles, not NFTs, they're cheap, whatever. My, like, honest opinion is they bought them for cheap and now they're worth more money and so people like them. Um, right, and because it was, it they they all, if you were, what, how, how did you get to claim one of these? Like, it, was there a certain activity threshold on Reddit or just if you had a Reddit account? No, you just had to buy them. They were like 10 bucks a piece. Okay. Oh yeah, here you go. Yeah, well, I just didn't know if there was some element of like, of course, like if you give me a, a free NFT, you're gonna, you know, be more into it than the other NFTs that you uh, didn't receive for free. But if that's not the case, yeah. no, people just uh, people were just not very early. Yeah, and is it just that again, everyone always looking for that that thesis of like, oh, these, you know, Reddit is such a uh, an institution as far as like internet and meme culture. These are the first NFTs associated with that. Ergo, these will be valuable someday. Is that is that the thought process? I think so. I, I mean, like people like them. They like being able to pay a little bit of money to show off their fun avatar on Reddit. Like, I think it kind of hits a lot of the same thesis we've had about PFP NFTs for a long time. Um, right. But... I think it's just like, I don't know. It's funny. It, I mean, this is hilarious. Reddit avatar holders will enjoy the functionality of NFTs without using the term, except the term digital collectibles to get a lot more airtime in the near future. I love the idea of what they were rebelling against was the literal letters NFT, but conceptually they were totally on board with the underlying yeah. technology. <laughs> yeah. NFT is just a dirty word. We don't like yeah. that. No, but give us yeah, all these digital collectibles. Uh, we, I mean, collectible. ETH is pumping right now, isn't it? It has been. Yeah, yeah it's been a good day. Look at that. What, do, what I, I, I haven't even seen. Is there any, what are the astrologists saying were the catalysts here? Honestly, I haven't seen anyone really talk. So some guy, like some, literally a person, it seems like in an account bought like a hundred million dollars worth of ETH. <laughs> longs today um and so i think that was really the biggest catalyst of someone buying a hundred million dollars worth of ETH, essentially um yeah that that seems like it would do it for sure um you want to do a underdog draft with me before we get out of here oh, i'd love to i'm, I'm itching i let's, let's uh, i'm really devastated sure, that man. i'm gonna miss most of the uh nfl season not being in new york Dude, you're but, when you get back to your apartment, you're gonna blast off so hard. Oh, Allie's fucked. Yeah, <laughs> just not stand a chance. Oh my goodness. The uh, GM Lunchable. Yeah. So the last time Andy and I did one of these drafts, I finished top ten in the. Uh, if you guys want to hop into this, this is the goal line stand. It's a twelve person, uh, six rounds, similar to the battle royale except double. The entry, same amount of rounds, but 72 player pool instead of 36. But we gotta we gotta recapture the magic here. What Nez? Nez is sitting on one of these Reddit collectibles. This also reminds me seeing Nez in the Let's chat. Go. 
playing underdog. So I'm super excited. The badge bros, if you guys seen them, they've been doing uh, awesome underdog daily content on their YouTube channel. And we are going to be their new home in the deposit kingdom. So we got a new channel set up for them in the discord. They're already talking strat about across all sports, football, MLB, NFL, all that good stuff. Highly recommend if you guys aren't already in the deposit kingdom discord, hop in there. They are your preeminent underdog daily thought leaders there. So check out the badge, bro. Super excited to have them in the deposit kingdom. Um, Paul, I've been in this lobby for over 45 minutes. Well, we got you, buddy. We got you. We're, we're ready to rip. All right. So what's the, what's going on this week? I have done no research because I'm not going to be playing this week. So we got one really sick game, which I think is Miami at Detroit. I believe it has like a 51 over under people are talking themselves into this Minnesota Arizona game being a good one. Um, and then Philly Pitt. And then other than that, it's kind of a gross slate across the board, at least for like game mm -hmm. environments. Um, I'm curious here. I mean, I don't mind. I kind of like the idea of going in on this, this Miami Detroit game. What do you, what do you think? You can also do Derek. Well, Henry so then. Jacobs just absolutely lit them up. Yeah. Is Tannehill playing? That's a really good question. It sounds like he is, but we haven't heard anything definitive yet. We got a pick. I see I, you do Tyree Kill. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Let's uh, I, I assume too, like depending on how settled ADP gets, um, if he stays as like a back end of the round one, like I don't know. I'm probably telling myself that we can at least get unique combos with him if you're reaching for him a little bit early. But I, I'm glad you brought up the Tannehill thing because that definitely takes the bloom off the Derrick Henry Rose. I mean, as excited as I am to see Malik Willis, if he gets a first career start there, that's probably not great for for Henry. Yeah, I wouldn't love it. But I do like. I'm sure Henry will have a good game. Houston's defense is not nothing special. Uh, yeah. So two is a high up QB though, so we got to be cognizant of that. Yeah, we might actually, we might even lose that because I, I assume yeah. like someone could, if the Waddle owner will probably take. Yeah, we might end up, might end up having to do like a Goff and someone else combo or something. And I mean, if if we get boxed out of the game, it's not horrendous to have Tyree Kill as a one off. No. I'll be interested to see how the narratives shape up with Justin Jefferson this week because the Cardinals have actually been really good against wide receivers. They, they've just been oddly shutting wide receivers down. I think Olave was really the only wide receiver who got loose against them, and they've been a bit of a tight end funnel. I mean, Justin Jefferson's mm -hmm. so good that it doesn't fucking matter, but I'm just wondering if that, that narrative will persist this weekend. But yes, the uh, I, I'm telling you, I, I called it on Monday. I mean, once Josh Jacobs shoved it down our throats against the Texans, I was like, Derrick Henry, I don't know how much he is on DraftKings, but he's going to be I, uber in one of my leagues this week. So I have Josh. I have my, my team sucks, but they're good. I don't know. It's one of those teams. Um, but I, I have Jacobs uh, and I, I won this week with I'm trying to load sleeper, but it's not loading some my like. So I had one, two, two players put up actual zeros <laughs> and an, another player put up two points. And I still uh, scored 140 I, points in one. Was Michael Gallup one of the zeros? No. It was James Robinson and Romeo Dubs. Oh, or wow. Dobbs, yeah, Dobbs. Dobbs was was brutal that zero there. Yeah, and then I had DK DK Metcalf with two, but then Saquon and Josh Jacobs and Tyler Boyd and Mahomes <laughs> bailed me out. <laughs> it's hilarious when you look at those because you're just like if you spread out Tyler Boyd's score across like all three of them and they all score ten points, <laughs> it's just like oh thank you yeah. thank you Tyler Boyd for carrying all this dead weight. Yeah. Oh shit. 
I, I miss I saw I, I saw his birthday uh Instagram posts, but I missed this signing. Thank you, Woman's Chris Conley today signed with the Titans. We gotta get Chris Conley back in the club. I miss that dude. Oh yeah, we do. Let's see. Jay Smooth here. Go ahead. Oh no, Tua went. Oh, Jay Smooth got uh got sniped there. Tua doesn't fall to him one pick. goodness i never understand that like why are you taking <laughs> Tua there my my guess is they were just drafting right off the adp and weren't really thinking about it but i'm not sure because no, tyler me, was higher than Tua on the ADP. was he really yeah mfg are you watching the stream did you just want to be a dick you just didn't want any of us to get our Tua sex might have been it i had that i had a team that would have been really good in last week's uh, underdog lineup where a guy took Joe Burrow after I had Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And I was just like, why, why are you doing that? Like, what's going on here? Especially the Battle Royales. Like, when there's only six, like, everyone I normally kind of stays out of each other's way, right? Because everyone's wanting to get yeah. those snacks for the most part. Wait, how did you sneak in? Did you Did you go across the border again? Uh yeah, I was in the city for for a night this past. Get your yeah. fix it. <laughs> yeah, you know, had to do what I had to do. Went yeah. to the Nets game. It was fun. Oh, nice. All right, what are we looking at here? Um, yeah, so I would say like quarterbacks got. Uh, I guess only three quarterbacks have gone. Man, this is a gross quarterback slate. Um, yeah, it's a I tough week. Think- I definitely think we can wait on quarterback. I really doubt, you know, one thing you could do. Oh man. ARSB. I was hoping he would hang. I think we just ditched Tyreek. Yeah. I'm fine to ditch him. Um, Let's see. I have no problem going with, Kenneth Walker as a running back. I think he's electric. Um, I also don't mind Olave uh, at wide receiver. What do you think? I don't hate Olave. Yeah, let's grab him. There's a world where you could do like Olave and then grab a grab a, a Raider later on, whether it's Renfro or Waller. Or- someone yeah i i kind of like that angle um i think we'd probably have to take car here and then you could also take waller with your last pick and then if uh he's out then just set the the injury thing for another tight end yeah so what do we have here because i don't i don't think we need to take one of these other tight ends i mean i like devonta smith but to me this tier feels fairly flat here i i, I kind of like the idea of grabbing grabbing car and setting that up what do you think yeah i think that makes sense the it other option so much... would be what's that go ahead no, i was just saying don't. the only other option there would really be to like punt and try to just grab do a, a saint stack but that doesn't feel good i know especially because i haven't heard too if we know who's going to be starting. Yeah. It says status still to be determined. That makes it a little tricky there. Do you know what, what else? We... We'll take some hill action. Yeah. That's what I was going to say too. <laughs> that That's what, that's what vaulted us into the top 10 uh, last yeah. week or last time we did we'll it. Get a taste of hill to Chris Olave touchdown or something, something oh, cheeky yeah. on the goal line. Uh, David has questions for you. Oops. Uh, any updates on season one of we do a little? Yes. Uh, I think don't hold me to it, but we're hoping to roll out the first episode, uh, late next week. If not the week after it's all done recording, all done editing. We're just trying to finalize some of the NFT stuff for season one. Uh, we have some fun, uh, new new things that we want to experiment with 
um, since we had some really great artists and stuff on this season. Uh, but really, really excited for it. We have 10 episodes this time, so more content, um, really good conversations, and also just like higher quality in general too, which will be nice. Are all, are all 10 episodes in the can? Yeah. They're yeah. like, they're basically all ready to go. I could post them all on Twitter tonight if I wanted to, but <laughs> Dees wouldn't like that. <laughs> yeah. That, you can't go rogue on that. Can you, can you tease any guests or is that all still a surprise? Yeah, I can. So we, we showed Sobe today, a little clip. That one was funny. Um, he was actually messaging me during this live stream about what kind of data I'm using for so rare. <laughs> so funny. I sent him the sheets. Um, we had a couple of really great artists. We had um, Dave Krugman, the photographer on his, his conversation was really good. Um, probably one of the ones that I found most interesting. I'm not sure if we've said anything about this one yet is um. This guy named Emmett, he's one of the people on, uh, he's like an urban explorer. Uh, and there's like this old video on Reddit um, of people climbing this like tower in Shanghai that. Oh, was this the one we watched that video like a month back when they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's oh, that guy. Yeah. Um, so and their, their Reddit or uh, YouTube accounts called like On the Roofs. Um, we had him on, and that was such an interesting conversation. It was really, really good. Um, I, I really enjoyed that one. We had a lot of artists, uh, a couple other like big name artists in the space. Um, I think Gossamer has already tweeted about it. Gossamer was on; um, she was really great. A few other pretty cool artists, and then some some DJs and and other people like um, try to keep a pretty good mix of of artists and investors and builders and all of that. Awesome. Yeah. Excited to, uh, excited to check that out. Yeah. We're starting to talk to a couple different people about some potential sponsorships and all that fun stuff. All the, uh, the less sexy parts of podcasts, but you know, we're that tired of awesome. drinking this Fiji water for, for free on, yeah. on the shows. No more, no more free advertisements. Exactly. All right, we got snaked on uh, Taysom Hill, which is fine because we're probably going to grab yeah. Waller anyways. Um, yeah, I mean, underdog is the obvious. We do a little sponsorship there. Anytime an underdog crew wants to come on, I think Deez and I would be very excited to talk uh, <laughs> talk underdog on the pod. We'd be super down. Uh, all right, let's see what Nez does here. We probably can sit on Waller. Maybe, maybe that's ignorant. Um, Do we want to get a little a little low correlation cheeky with Jamal Williams? Is DeAndre Swift going to play? That's a that's a good. I love that call. Um, I thought he was going to play this last week, and he didn't. So who knows? Like maybe he's still. I just, I doubt he's league. getting like the goal line bang and snaps. Regardless, he wasn't like even that. when he was healthy. I like that call. Um, we're definitely in like total flyer territory, anyways. Here for running back, so to get the correlation and then. You know, if DeAndre Swift was ruled out, I mean, Jamal Williams would be a round two pick in these. Yeah. Uh, good call flagging that. And then we probably can – I mean, no one's going to draft Renfro or Matt Collins, right? Like we can we – can Yeah, so I think we just take whichever one lot. of those we want. And then here – I mean, I'll, I'm happy to take DJ Moore if he falls to us here. What do you think? Yeah, uh, the well. So I guess it's the question of: Do we want only Waller with Carr, or do we want do we oh, want a right. Renfro or Hollins? You're right. You're right. I say we grab Waller. Um, I think we probably want it. Carr is a quarterback you want to double stack, right? Like he's not going to be running. Yeah, I think so. At all for us. Let's do that. Edrin, it's your birthday today too. Happy birthday, bro. Oh, that's a fun Cap name. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Michael Career Carter. Man, that that Jets Pats game this weekend is gonna be so gross. Dude, watching that Pats game on Monday night was a fucking wave of emotions. I'm sitting there on the couch and I'm like, oh my god, Bailey Zappy, I love you. And then I was like, oh, 
Justin Fields is too fast. You cannot that, stop him. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. I mean, obviously what we all do on Twitter is overreact to shit, but it really was like, holy shit, Bailey Zappi is the next great quarterback of our generation. I'm Back texting my Saturday. dad. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, it's amazing. Oh. Yeah, it was yeah. Tough. Mackenzie, I was legit depressed about the Brees Hall stuff on Monday. I mean, he he was he was the fucking stone cold nuts, like league dude. winner of all league winners. Like, God damn. Can I? I know it's not fun to talk about your a particular fantasy it. football I'll team. Yeah. So I'm in this one league where I, my buddy invited me to it. My buddy Sean, who you've met, he invited me to it. Um, he was at the underdog live live event. Yeah. Um, with me. And it's like his buddies, friends from college and all that. And they had a guy drop out and was like, yeah, I'll join. And last year I wasn't super active. My team got really hurt. It's like a, this like half keeper dynasty league salary cap. It's like a pretty intense league. And like my team last year was shit. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take this year more seriously again. Like I was just really busy last year. My four running backs are DeAndre Swift. Javante Williams, no, Reese Hall, no, and Clyde Edwards Hilaire. No, <laughs> and so I like, like, I'm starting. It, it's it's awful. It's just you it's, accidentally it's really drafted bad. zero RB, is what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it's tough. Uh, <laughs> so that this is season's brutal. not going great for me. It's not going to be a good one, but it's one of those things where it's like. I don't know any of these guys other than Sean. And I'm like, no guys, like I, I'm, I'm trying hard. My team is just like, <laughs> they're all on the IR. Yeah. I mean, it, it honestly is so gross. Like when you, you know, if you include Jonathan Taylor being banged up right now, but like Brees Hall and Javante Williams, like that's like right there, just three of the most physically and explosive running backs t- physically talented and explosive running backs in the league like to lose those yeah. guys just sucks so much i feel like this season has been really shitty with injuries and I, I feel like we say that every year but i don't know something about this year in particular i feel like it's been a lot yeah i i mean yeah i agree too with where it's like we always say like oh this year is crazy and there's so much volatility and it's like no the, the volatility actually seems even ramped up <laughs> even more this yeah. year you, you like know how many quarterbacks league. are out and like how many wide receivers and running backs. It's crazy. And it's also, you know, it's such a bizarre world when it's like, yeah, we're kind of excited to see Sam Ellinger play for the Colts. And then with the Jets, we're like, bring back Joe Flacco. So fucking J- Garrett Wilson can catch passes again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe by Garrett. Uh, I have Garrett Wilson on the same team where I have Brees Hall. I got them both in the rookie draft. And I'm like, oh, maybe Garrett Wilson will start getting points again. I don't know. <laughs> see. Who, so who do we take here? I mean, like Renfro is definitely like the higher floor guy, but like Matt Collins has like what have, flashed. What legit are their last feeling. couple of weeks looked like? I don't, I don't know. So whether. Collins had a touchdown um, last week. Um, he was only two for forty four. I mean, now that Renfro is back, he's just not running as many snaps. But yeah, he's more of an end zone long throw guy. Renfro, I mean, three weeks ago, you know, he's coming back, or I don't know when that Arizona game was, but he had a 10 target game. Um, it's, uh, I know, I know what Clay, Clay's going to be rooting for his guy, UNC guy, Matt Collins. I'm happy to go, Max Way. I'll support, I'll support UNC this one time. We're going to do it for Clay, just this one time. The big ragu of UNC, Matt Collins. There she is. There she is. Big ragu of UNC. (laughs) The last time Andy and I drafted one of these goal line stands, we finished top 10, although we didn't get our Taysom Hill magic in there this week. Uh, Andy, fun show as always. Going to have to, uh, we'll see if I can go down the so rare rabbit hole. I don't don't know if I have the time, but I I am. I I have to say, I think it'd be really fun for NFL. I, I, I think it'd be a really, really fun system for it. I do too. Yeah, that's the one where I I could see myself getting very addicted to it. Uh, even seeing John Boy's little optimizer there, that's what that's what really gets me going. You start hand building <laughs> teams, comparing projected points. Then yeah. You're oh yeah. Uh, all right. 
good stuff as always tonight. Anything else on your radar other than for people to keep a lookout for we do a little? Uh, no, not too much. Probably if I had to guess next Tuesday on the 1st, I'll have a more finite launch date stuff for we do a little. But uh, same thing. It'll be an open edition for like the season one NFT, pretty similar. We will have potentially another NFT that's a little bit more limited. Um, so we'll see. I definitely keep an eye out for that if, if you're a fan and want to maybe have some fun with us. Um, but that's really it. Awesome. Uh, we will next week, hopefully, we, we, we haven't, I haven't even heard from Jennings in a while. Who knows what MBL is doing? I Jack think he might was. be dead. I don't know. He, he might actually so jennings i saw they were posting uh they did a photo shoot i saw it on instagram so maybe he's just living that dad life doing everything he can right now uh we'll try to get the crew back together in the saddle but we appreciate you guys hanging out as always get in your action on underdog hit up john boy if you want to get in those so rare streets with his data we'll see you guys next week peace